here I have my VVDI key tool. Here I have an LKPO2 transponder. Let's put it in and see what it says. It is a Toyota Master Key 1 transponder. Here I have what I believe to be well a blank LKPO2 transponder. Yes, this is blank. What I'm going to do is show you a nifty property of the LKPO2. Notice you can program a transponder into a Toyota G. Let's do this. One indicates master, two indicates master, three, four, and then five and six are subordinate. We will do one, and we have prepare success. We will now go back and reread our transponder value. Now it identifies as a uh, a Toyota G Master. That's an interesting spelling error I've never noticed before. But whoops. What we're going to is a 2005 Corolla, which uses a dot key, or an ID67, I believe. So we need to change this LKPO2 to a dot format, but it's not listed. Unless we go to chip, in which here it is. So we will press enter, and again, the number system assigns a position to the transponder value. We will hit enter. Success. Curious, right? How we can change it however we like. These do not lock this transponder can be formatted as many times as you want. I could even use this very transponder to put inside of my Tango and I could use this Tango to write this transponder or to clone out a Chrysler key that is a 4E uh, transponder value. If it's Tiris, most likely LKPO2 can emulate it. We will go back. We will do something nifty. We will go to special functions and we will change our 4D into a 4C. Prepare success. Now why would I do that? Well it's very easy to explain why. I can now use this transponder and VVDI2 and write it into a Toyota ECU that we would normally reflash but instead I could program this key into it and forego or bypass the entire learning procedure uh, of like on off or brake pedal this or that to introduce the keys where this key would when introduced with VVDI2 would start the car. And let's go and identify this just to confirm that it is in fact a 4C transponder. And there it is. It is a Tiris 4C 
and this is its assigned value. This value never changes. Anytime you format an LKPO2 to a 4C, this is generally what it does. I believe at least. I don't believe there's different values that it inputs. If you do a 4C conversion, this is what it changes it to. But again, I need an ID 67. So I will reach down here and I will take this ID 67 that I have and I will read it. Let's just hold it here. We have a Toyota Master. Now I'm going to set this guy right here. My other LKP02 fell under my very fragile probe. And now I'm going to clone this. We can also edit it if we wanted to. But I'm going to hold this here. I'm going to press down. And I'm going to. Oops. I need to put the original in. See, I, I hardly ever use it to clone. We're going to read it. take out from coil it is calculating and this procedure usually doesn't take long I've used it a few times during this time we can uh, take a look at my beautiful paint job that I have bestowed upon my VVDI2 and my gift from a friend this 3d printed key and chip holder. It's pretty nifty. Let's go ahead and put this guy back in. And it does have positive retention, so it doesn't come out. Again, the original transponder is down here. And this should be my LKPO2. That is currently a 4C transponder, or formatted as a 4C transponder. I would like to get into the brain of this and understand what this calculation process is actually doing. You can see my battery needs to be charged. I have a 2005 Corolla that I need to get to in about 15 minutes. Those are pretty easy to make keys to if you know how to do it. First question I like to ask a customer the key that you lost or that was stolen or destroyed, did it open or lock and unlock your driver's side door and start the vehicle? If they say yes, then it's going to be a peachy job. And the longer this takes, the more concerned I am about its nearly depleted battery. This is actually taking a lot longer than I remember it taking. But it's almost done. Calculate success. Now we will put this here and we will write and it says OK. Very nice. So we're reading the key now, or the transponder value, and it displays ID 67. I'm going to set this one down right here, and I'm going to pick this one up, and we are going to read this one now. And you see, it is a success. We have turned a 4D or a blank LKPO2 into a D, into a G, into a C, and then cloned it back into a D. Very cool. Before I forget, we will put 
this transponder, one of them, they're both the same, into a Toyota, or a Toyota, as it said on the VVDI. We will put it into a shell. And I've had a hell of a time closing this shell. Let me move my probes. Little experiment I was doing. Get that out of the way. Bam. Lock that little bastard down. Shazam! Now we have a dot key. Good to go. And potentially a G key if we needed to change it again. This is a 2005 Corolla blinking security light. We'll put key in ignition. Turns on. Whoops! The wipers were on. See, we got a blinking security light. OBD port right here. Usually I use my orange Toyota dongle, but I can't find it. My system key. Type 2 probably. Maybe not. He is on connection error. We'll go year make. We call Corolla 05 key. Ignition on. This is the cloned out or programmed LKP02. This is all keys lost, about 90%, 93, 95, all keys lost. We have a solid security light already. Program next one, escape, turn ignition off, wait for about five seconds it says, turn ignition on off quickly, five times. Three, four, five. I want to take it out and put it in. There it goes. Oh. There it is. Kind of messes up on the procedure. It doesn't tell you to take the key out. We are done. Okay. We can skip all that. We're done. ahead of myself. No light. Access granted. Flip key over to confirm both sides work well. No light. There it is. 